Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going for a quick coffee to let a number of horrors unfold before our very ears. I would also like to welcome Fear Street to tonight's video, an exceptionally talented YouTuber who I'm sure you will all enjoy. So for now, it's time to get comfortable, grab your latte, and let the darkness take control. I'm an 18-year-old female from the UK. This happened in February of 2019. I was 16 at the time, and I got set up on a semi-blind date. We had seen photos of each other by a mutual friend. The guy was called Cameron, who was 19. Cameron seemed like your average guy, maybe a little into video games and anime and stuff, but overall, nothing my friends told me about him seemed off in any way. Our mutual friend gave us each other's numbers, and we texted for a night, and decided to meet in a Starbucks the next day since we were both free. I never liked to meet new people this soon, but figured since Cameron knew my friend, it couldn't possibly go wrong. How mistaken I was. I arrived slightly early, ordered my coffee since I never liked guys to feel like they have to buy it for me, and parked up a seat facing away from the door and pulled out a book. I'm there for maybe 15 minutes chilling out when I get a text saying he's here. So I'm like, great, I'm at this table, and I feel a presence over my shoulder, and I turn my head, slightly in acknowledgement. He must be here. Before I even get the chance to squeak a hello, his lips latch onto my neck, and he starts sucking on it. Now, I don't like people touching my neck at the best of times. I'm very ticklish, and I get super uncomfortable by people even touching it. A few times, I've had massages or hair treatments, and I've been holding it in discomfort, and he's latched on like a leech. This man also smelled horrendous, kind of like dust personified. I freak out and elbow his chest to get him the hell off me. He lets go and looks at me with this weird expression on his face, and laughs in deadpan. It's really, really creepy, and I start to become alarmed, and ask him what the hell that was about, and he just said he thought it was cute. I try to have a conversation. I'm like, okay, first impressions don't mean anything. Let's try and give him a chance. He's just creepily staring at my chest. Wow. I didn't know Asians could have boobs like that. I better not let you go. That's a direct quote. You can't make this crap up. I'm distinctly uncomfortable, but I don't want to just run away. He's giving me really weird vibes, so I go into the ladies' bathroom and wait for someone else to come in. I ask her to help me get out undetected. I don't want this man following me home or something like that. She of course agrees and lends me her hat and scarf. It's February in the UK after all, and we come out the bathroom together and she manages to help me sneak out the back door of the Starbucks without him noticing me. He asked my friend where I went, but I told my friend to never mention me again. I was too terrified. I know I probably didn't behave well, I should have just told him I was leaving, but I was honestly so scared. To the guy who decided it was appropriate to suck my neck, before we had even said hello, let's not meet again. I grew up in Alaska, where we have boroughs instead of what you'd call a county. They're pretty much the same thing. There are two cities that are practically connected in the borough I grew up in, one smaller than the other by maybe 3,000 people. I lived in the smaller city from when I was born to about 11 and a half. It was only about five minutes away from my best friend Ava. Ava and I were 11 years old, and one day we were planning to go hang out at our local Target just to get some Starbucks and walk around, maybe buy some clothing. Since we were still fairly young, my mom told us we could go, but she'd have to stay in the Starbucks. We agreed, and that was that. 
Ava and I were walking around, chatting for a while. We had decided to buy these friendship necklaces that we liked. And as soon as we bought them, we put them on and decided to go to the Starbucks to end our little trip. We saw my mom, said hi, and my mom told us that she was going to bring the car up so we could leave. We sat down and started sipping away at our drinks. At this Starbucks, as you enter it, the cashier and coffee making station is to the right. And straight ahead was this large round table that could fit maybe eight people. The other tables were two-seaters. We sat at the table closest to the big one as there was a group of boys and girls sitting there. At 11, everyone looked like an adult to me, but looking back, I'd say they looked anywhere from 17 to 20. They were all just being noisy, non-stop laughter. We rolled our eyes and continued talking. We started talking about how cute our new necklaces were and I suggested that we take a selfie with them on. I got up, stood right beside Ava and took the oh so cute photo of us with our new necklaces. Then the group looked up at us. I don't remember their exact words, but one of the guys said something along the lines of, Hey, your necklaces are so pretty. Do you want to take some photos with us? And the group started laughing. My mom was always super careful about teaching me about stranger danger. Considering I'm a female on the short end of the stick, I was maybe about 5'1 or 5'2. I looked over at them with Ava and we basically both told them, no thank you. They kept pressuring us into taking photos and that's when I got super nervous. I remember distinctly one of the girls saying, God, John, way to be a pedophile, as she laughed. We continuously kept saying, no thank you. And I remember looking over at the barista, thinking, why aren't they doing anything about this? Finally, my mom messaged me saying it was time to go, so we got up and ran outside to go to my house. I decided to use a Starbucks gift card that I got for Christmas this one morning before class. I live in a college town and wanted to go to the Starbucks closest to campus, so I wasn't late. This one doesn't have a drive through window, so I had to walk in. When I walked up to the front door, a man and a woman were sitting at the outside table, and they both made eye contact with me. I remember thinking it was kind of odd because they looked me up and down. Plus, it's like 30 degrees, and they were clearly open chairs inside. Come to think of it, they didn't even have drinks or anything. I walked inside and ordered my drink like normal, but I could still feel them staring at me through the front window. Once I got my drink, I started to walk out to my car, passing the two people. I heard both of them stand up and start walking behind me without a word. I got really scared and put my car keys in between my knuckles in case I needed to protect myself. I sped up and got to my car as fast as I could and locked all the doors. Not two seconds later, the woman knocked aggressively on my driver's side window, essentially making me damn near wee myself. The man was right next to her with a straight face hands in his pocket, looking through the window of my car as if he was searching for something he wanted. I cracked the window like a centimeter, so she couldn't fit her hand in or anything like that, and asked her if she needed anything, and she told me to roll the window down more. I just said it was really cold, so that I was going to keep it up. She then asked me if I could give them some money, and she seemed like she was insisting, not so much asking. 
I just stumbled over my words and told her that I paid with a gift card and that I'm a poor college student who didn't have cash, which was true but sounded like an excuse. The man started to look confused and angry at me, and he yelled at me to get out of the car. That's when I noped out of there and drove away as quickly as I could. I'm glad I got out of there, but they sure as hell scared the crap out of me. I probably shouldn't have even spoken to them at all. So to the two people who nearly tried to rob me at Starbucks, let's not meet. I'm a female in my 20s who works in one of the more seedy areas of the city I live in. Every day on my break, I go to a Tim Hortons that's about a five minute walk. I don't own a vehicle at the moment, so... My methods of transportation to and from work are walking, transit, and I get a ride when available. In these last couple months, I've begun encountering this same man at this Tim Hortons every day I go, and I do mean every day. This wouldn't strike me as odd if it weren't for the fact that my work schedule and my break respectively, are very sporadic. Some days I work in the evenings and other days I leave at five. My lunch break is very much the same. I work with the general public and am always the first person people see when they come through the door, so my break and when I can go is completely dependent upon whenever there's time in between customer appointments. This can be anywhere between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. And yet, every single time that I've stepped foot into Tim's, every day on my break, at different times of day, it never matters. There he is, dressed in the same red t-shirt and sitting in the same spot, staring intensely at me as soon as he spots me. Let me back up a bit for further context. The first time I saw this man was about two months ago. Instantly, from the moment I saw him, he gave me the creeps. He's lewd and stares unflinchingly. He has to be almost triple my age, but that doesn't deter him from boring holes into me with his intense gaze. If I catch his eye, which is a rare occasion because normally I try to avoid eye contact at all costs, he smiles or makes gestures. As a woman, I'm very accustomed to this predatory look from men. A woman knows when she's being creeped on. This man doesn't even try to hide it. He's obtuse and overtly gross about it, to the point that I avoid eye contact with him, even in passing, at all costs. And I don't know if he just wears the same shirt every day or owns zillions of the same one, but every time I see him, he's always dressed in the same red shirt, which makes it especially easy to spot him and didn't know where to sit so that I'm as far away from him as possible. Unfortunately, that's only when sitting out of his view is an option at all, as this Tim's is always packed. And as this Tim's is quite small as it is, where I sit doesn't make much of a difference anyway. I seem to always be within his view. I can especially feel and see his stare in my peripheral when I get up to throw something away, or worse, when I'm forced to stand directly beside him to wait for my coffee. To make matters even more odd, he started appearing on days that I stopped for coffee after work too. Ever since I first saw him, I've never not seen him with every trip I've made there. After work, when I want coffee, I only go when it's an earlier shift and only on occasion because 
I'm not comfortable walking in this area of town after dark, as it is. So this is usually around 5, but some days my shift ends earlier if it's a slower day. From here, I usually get a ride home, so I just sit there with my coffee and a book and wait. Now, as of recently, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. He started appearing at this Tim's after my shift, in addition to during my break. The last time I had plans to shop with my mother, she was to pick me up from Tim's and we were going to go to the mall. This time, he sat across from me and stared while I occupied myself with my phone, trying to ignore the feeling of my skin crawling under his creepy gaze. When my mom pulled up at the front of the parking lot, I eagerly bounded for the exit nearest me and then only looked back when I got into the car. He was still staring in my direction, through the window. I mentioned him to my mom and she said from what she could see into the building, she noticed him staring at me too, and also at her from across the building into the parking lot. For some reason, that really chilled me. At first, I found this creepy man's constant presence to be a nuisance, but now I'm beginning to find it more and more unsettling. I suppose it really could all be a coincidence, but it's beyond strange that our Tim Horton's routines could be so perfectly aligned with how random my schedule is. As I said, it'd be entirely one thing if I went in for my break at the same time every day. In that case, he very well could just be on the same clock and just happen to be a creepy pervert with a pension for younger girls. But it's not a fixed schedule. The odds of me seeing him every time I go to Tim's for my break and finish work both at the spontaneous and random rate that I do, is minimal. I know I should probably just stop going altogether, but I have a routine that's been mine for the last two years, and I balk at the idea of letting some creepy old man force me to abstain from my iced coffee fix or derail any part of my daily itinerary, for that matter. I'd be more cautious if he was more proactive, but the thing is, he's never actually approached me, talked to me, or followed me. In that sense, he hasn't done anything wrong at all. He watches me intently, to an alarming degree, as I eat and drink my coffee, or when I wait for my coffee at the counter, and as I leave, but he hasn't followed me. I haven't yet felt unsafe walking back to my workplace, but I keep an eye out for him, just in case one day he decides to take his creepy behavior beyond Tim Hortons. Back in my high school years, I'd often meet with a few friends at a local Dunkin' Donuts, which was conveniently near a railway we'd all take to our weed guy's house. My closest friend at the time, Katie, and I usually met up earlier than everyone else just to hang out, order our extra-large drinks and hash browns, and attempt at some Hey Mister shenanigans to score some tour boys from anyone willing to buy us beer. I'd consider us to be pretty naive and overall nice girls, which never proved to be an issue to either of us, until we were nice to the wrong person. Now for a little background of my hometown. I grew up in the forgotten borough of NYC Staten Island. For those who are unaware, there was, and kind of still is, a pretty horrendous opioid epidemic. So seeing zombie-like civilians strolling the streets is fairly common. Because of this, I became pretty good at spotting out someone struggling with heroin and things of the sort. On this day, Katie and I met up at Dunking and sat at our usual booth. 
We were in the midst of messing around with our phones and being our overly giggly selves when I noticed out of the corner of my eye, someone suddenly stop outside of the glass door still smiling. I glanced over to see if it was maybe one of our friends and ended up making direct eye contact with a basic Staten Island looking dude. I looked away unbothered and just carried on. Just another customer anyway. After the guy got his coffee, he sat directly at the table across from our booth. I chose to ignore the fact he sat weirdly close and resisted eye contact, since that already awkwardly happened. But I guess the motion caught Katie's attention as she looked over her shoulder at the man settling in. She looked back at me, made a face that said, uh, okay, and we just giggled and tried to move on. Every now and then, I glanced in his direction, mainly just because I like to be observant of my surroundings, but also because I kept seeing him scratch his nose, neck, and face in my peripheral vision, and noticed he was bleeding from various little cuts on his body. This was a dead giveaway he was doing some form of opiate, as they tend to get very itchy and scratch until their skin breaks. A few minutes later, the man asked if one of us had a charger he could borrow. I kindly denied, and Katie only had an iPhone charger, while the man clearly had an Android phone. This slight exchange was enough for the man to feel invited, and he'd continue to make comments for quite some time. Being that this was around four years ago, I don't remember the entirety of the conversation, but I do remember him often asking general questions, like if we lived around here, what we do on our free time, and creepy things of the sort. I was pretty vague yet polite in my responses, but Katie was always a bit more enthusiastic in her words, making it pretty easy for this guy to reciprocate and basically join our conversation altogether. In Katie's innocent stupidity, the guy basically found out some of the main train stops we'd get off at to hang out in the area. He also found out we would indulge in the devil's lettuce, which only made this guy feel even more inclined. At some point, he mentioned how his ex-girlfriend got him into some trouble, got him into heroin, which he used to sell, served jail time for, and pretty recently got out. He also mentioned how he'd been an ice cream truck driver ever since his release, and told us that he's always driving around the train stops Katie mentioned earlier. He also, repeatedly, offered to give us rides around his truck someday, with free ice cream as the bribe. We were pretty naive and overly nice girls, Katie more so than I, so one thing led to another, and eventually, the guy was asking for Katie's social media, which she more than happily obliged. She's always been really dedicated to expanding her following count, you see. Through this entire exchange, I was mostly nodding, smiling, laughing here and there, so me remaining silent during this social media exchange went unnoticed. However, once the guy started following Katie on Instagram, he quickly found mine through a tagged picture on her page. I wasn't private at the time, so he immediately started liking and commenting on nearly every one of my pictures. The comments were extremely cringy, consisting of heart eyes, water squirt emojis and things like, damn, meh. Finally, after the longest half hour, I urged, we really should be catching our train. Fortunately, the man wasn't persistent after that, and we were on our way back with no problem. After some verbal recap of what happened, I convinced Katie to block him and I did the same, and we brushed it off at that. I honestly forgot about that strange interaction, until about a week later. I was hanging out with some friends at a park near my high school when munchies made me crave Ralph's ice cream, which was just up the block. I ventured off with one other friend, and almost made it to the store, before the sound of an ice cream truck approached from behind us. Completely lost in conversation, my attention was only caught by the high-pitched screeching of the truck's brakes, and a somewhat familiar voice. Of course, it was him. He shouted at me, 
But, with Ralph only a couple of feet from us, I ignored him and rushed in with my friend. The guy didn't stick around, being that he was blocking the whole lane on a narrow two-way road, but we still called our friend at the park to pick us up in his car. For the next two weeks, there were about four times this man tried to pick me up in his truck. At this point, making me pretty paranoid, as I was potentially being stalked, the last time it happened, he was parked directly outside of one of the train stops, almost as if he was waiting for me. He called out, asking why I blocked him, and saying he just wanted to be friends. At this point I'd had enough, told him to just leave me alone. My dad's a lieutenant, which was a lie but slipped out in my defense, and walked away before he could reply, and into the diner, where I was meeting my friends that night. I saw his truck drive away in the window and never had an interaction with the ice cream man again. The sound of an ice cream truck has haunted me ever since. I worked at a Tim Hortons all four years I was in college and I had a really sweet teen co-worker named Sophie. She was very bright and a little on the short side. Honestly, I thought she was only 14, but she was really 16, almost 17. During a shift one day, she tapped me on the shoulder and asked if I could come serve the customer up front right now. I didn't think anything of it at first. I get out there to find a man who was definitely in his mid to late 20s and of Indian descent so I just chalked it up to him having a heavy accent as the reason I was asked to handle his order. As I took and made his order, he was constantly leaning over the counter, peering around, looking at the staff members. I noticed Sophie hadn't come from out back yet. I quickly finished his order and wished him a good day. He just sort of nodded gave one more look and then left. Once he was out the door, Sophie came out and explained that he'd been randomly showing up there a lot during her shifts and would wait until her till was open to order. I understood it was making her uncomfortable, so I just told her if I was on shift to come grab me and I'd deal with his order. This went on for a few months, and he never said anything inherently disturbing, so there wasn't really any way to ban him from our location. We soon realized he knew what Sophie's car looked like and would even peek into the store. If he didn't see her up front, he'd go through the drive through in hopes of seeing her. Finally, one night I was getting off a late shift when I saw my older sister outside. Confused, I asked what she was doing there and she told me she was just there with a guy she'd been chatting with. Suddenly, he appeared and gave my sister a hug. My sister quickly introduced me to him. Somehow, taking my hair out of a ponytail and throwing my hoodie over my shirt changed my appearance enough that he didn't recognize me. I just nodded a hello and told my sister I was heading home. She followed me back to my car simply to ask why I was being so rude. I straight up told her how the guy had been stalking my coworker to just the right degree that she couldn't do anything about it. At first, my sister wanted to brush it off until I informed her of my co-worker's age and that he knew when she worked. A few days went by and the guy didn't show up again. I ended up asking my sister about it and she said he hadn't denied it and they had had a conversation and whatever she said had scared him off. 
I am currently a law student, and last semester had a creepy encounter with a boy on campus that still leaves the hairs on the back of my neck sticking straight up. I've had several strange encounters in my life, and have had a hard partying phase that certainly left me in precarious positions. However, never in my life have I felt so uncomfortable and so suspect based off one interaction, especially considering this one was on the heels of a time spent in Paris, which I am almost certain my friends and I were human trafficking targets at a nightclub one night. It was around President's Day weekend. I live in the graduate residence hall of the university, and it is a school known for its commuting undergraduate population, so the campus was fairly empty for a holiday weekend. It was the weekend, and I was hungover, craving Starbucks. I stumbled out of bed, showered, threw on some leggings and a sweatshirt, and my long, tan, gorgeous wool winter coat to head towards the campus dining hall and Starbucks. I had no makeup on, no bra, my hair still slightly damp. The point is, I did not look cute. As I made my way out of the dorm with my headphones in, I noticed how eerily quiet and empty it was. It was always quiet on weekends, as this is mainly a commute to school or students live off campus. But it was especially so on this day. My dorm is a short three minute walk to the main student center. In between my residence hall at one end and the student center at the other end is a walled, straightaway path that connects to all three major parking lots. There are benches and tables to sit outside, but people rarely hang out there except to duel or smoke a cigarette. As I approach the path, I notice a guy in a blue hoodie and Adidas track pants loitering back and forth by the side wall bench. He was attractive from what I could tell, but looked younger than me, possibly a sophomore or freshman on campus. I didn't think anything of it at first, as many people from the university and public enter onto campus via this path, except that he seemed to be waiting for me to approach him. And just as I did come within a short distance, he about faced me. He began walking towards me, right down the path head on. So I, thinking perhaps he was heading towards the dorms or parking lot, diagonally started walking across towards the other walled side of the path. Unfortunately, this was the narrowest part of the path where it essentially bottlenecks. Instead, he came towards me, still making eye contact, and opened his mouth, looking to start a conversation. Being a petite female, standing at five foot, I politely stopped, as he was now literally blocking my path, and I was caught in between the two walls, and I would have had to physically push him to continue. I've always been one of those people who get stopped and asked for directions. People feel comfortable striking up conversations with me. I lived in New York City for my undergraduate education, and this happened frequently on subways and on the streets with tourists, thus assuming he was asking for directions, as he did look a bit lost and shy. I removed an airpod from my ear and said, Can I help you? He was barely a head taller than me, and had these red sports goggles that athletes with glasses wear during games as well as a lime green string bag on his back that had the word Navy on it. He was unassuming at first, but what he had to say was for sure a first for me. He said in the calmest and lowest toned voice, yes, you can help me. I'm sorry to stop you, but you are the most beautiful girl I've seen in a long time. I have to introduce myself. My name is Nick. And with that, he moved in to about an inch away from me and stuck his hand up for me to shake. Caught with my back against the wall and totally off guard, I stepped horizontally closer to the student center end of the path and said something along the lines of, Oh, well, thank you. That is so sweet. I didn't shake his hand, which I found to be somehow the strangest thing of all. 
It was not a soft, graceful night to meet you gesture. Instead, it was more robotic and tense in nature. He then steps closer to me and asks me what my name is. Feeling very off put by how close he was to me, I told him my roommate's name and that it was nice to meet him, but I had to go and began walking away. At this point, he follows me, grabs me on my shoulder, jerking me backwards and stops me. Wait. I saw you come from the graduate hall. Are you a graduate student here? I had never seen you before. Can I please have your number? I'd like to see you again. Now this guy is so close, I'm facing him and was looking dead into his Adam's apple. I felt as though he was ready to almost pick me up. I step back and say, unfortunately, that yes, I am a law student and that I'm sorry, my boyfriend wouldn't like that. I said I had to go and meet him for breakfast and bed him goodbye. With this, he finally lets me leave and I basically speed walk into the student center and look over for my shoulder, only to see him walking in the opposite direction towards the parking lot. I was pretty shaken up with how aggressive he was and also that he had essentially watched me leave the dorm. Relieved, I get my food and then grab my Starbucks. Now, I don't have a boyfriend I was meeting, of course I made that up. So I was still alone, but the school had a very open-air dining hall, and the Starbucks was always packed with people. The Starbucks area has glass walls around the entrance so that you can see who enters and leaves the student center. As I'm standing there waiting for my drink, lo and behold, Nick comes strolling in. He spots me and stops dead in his tracks right outside the glass wall and literally puts his hands onto the glass to peer into me. Now, an older man, presumably a professor, sitting right inside the wall notices this, as it's quite strange, lowers his newspaper and looks around following the same eye gaze as Nick. Me and the older man make dead eye contact and he gives me a look like, what the hell? Just as this happens, my drink is ready. So I grab my coffee and turn away. A group of frat boys begin walking towards me, so I waved at a random one and pretended to know him, as they were deeper in the cafeteria away from Nick. The kid waves back at me and smiles. Hoping this throws Nick off, I look back to where he was standing, and he's gone. This guy is watching, this clearly confused as hell, and I'm standing there literally shaking. The frat boy yelled out some other random girl's name, guessing... I was his blackout hookup from the night before, I bet. So I looked around, frozen for a moment, and I thought I spotted his navy lime green bag from behind one of the side pillars of the food buffet. But I didn't waste time in finding out. Seeing my chance, I basically dead sprinted out the cafe and back down the path, not stopping until I had the key of my dorm in the lock. And I made my way to my room and threw up in my bathroom. I don't know why this interaction freaked me out so much, or why my body had the physical reaction it did, as I don't have any history of anxiety or nerves, but what I do know is I haven't been able to get this out of my head for the longest time. A few years ago, I went to a cafe I'd never been to before and ordered a coffee and dessert. It was a fairly fancy establishment, but... It also had an air of conviviality to it that made it feel very cozy. As I sat down to order a coffee and some cake, I noticed that one of the women sitting next to me was a fairly well-known actress, best known for starring in several acclaimed indie movies and the occasional blockbuster. She was there with her friend, and while I was a fan of her work, I didn't want to bother her, so I ate in silence, occasionally responding to text messages on my phone. Just as I was finishing up and getting ready to leave, the actress spilled her coffee. Her cup fell to the floor and shattered, and much of the coffee spilled onto my dress shoes. She began to apologize profusely, and I assured her that everything was okay. 
I joked that it was the best thing to happen to me in ages and told her I was a big fan of her work. She thanked me and as I prepared to leave, she said goodbye. Her friend was mostly silent the whole time but seemed friendly enough. A few days later, I returned to the cafe and ordered a coffee and an eclair. I placed my order and went to the restroom. When I returned to my table, I found a small pink bag stuffed with crumpled paper resting on top of it. I looked around to see if anyone else was there, but there were no other diners in the vicinity. I had clearly put my suit jacket there to indicate I had reserved the table. Confused, I asked a few waitresses if they would seen anybody drop off the bag, but all of them were confused and said no. I started to wonder if someone had left it behind. Eventually, curiosity got the better of me. I removed the crimpled paper and rifled through the bag to see what was inside. To my surprise, I discovered a black pair of panties in there, and they were wrapped around something heavy. It was a knife, and its blade had been painted red. I was deeply confused, and that was when I discovered something black at the bottom of the bag. It was human hair. The actress I had met earlier had that exact same hair color. My suspicions were confirmed when I found a photo under the hair. It was a picture of the actress wearing a bathrobe, but her hair had all been shaved. She was smiling, but there was something menacing about her smile. It seemed both seductive and malicious, like she took pleasure in frightening me. On the photo, a few words were written in what I had to assume was her handwriting. Hey babe, wanna play? Or are you too much of a loser to try me? I wasn't sure what to do. Why did she leave me a knife? How did she know I was even there? Was I in danger? To this day, I still don't have any answers, but I never returned to that cafe. I didn't even go to the police. It all seemed so surreal. I haven't watched any of her movies since, and I'm not sure what I'd do if I were to revisit the situation. This is one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. I live in Canada, and attend a college in a city that's not very safe. But since I was a first year student, I was so new to the city, and thought nothing would ever happen to me. Ignorant teenage moment. I'm stranded in the middle of the night. It was about 3am. I had stayed late at college to finish an assignment, which I ended up finishing nearly at midnight, and waited two hours before giving up. Especially since there were weird middle-aged men pulling off weird vibes waiting for the bus. They kept glancing at me and I got annoyed, so I finally crossed the street where there was a run-down Tim Hortons. I called my older brother who was working shift at the airport, and luckily he was on break, but it would take him about an hour to come get me since the airport was in a different city. So I sat outside on a table with benches and waited for him unaware that I was being watched by some dude the entire time. I guess it wasn't hard for him to notice me in the dark, since I was wearing a pastel pink sweater, but he came up from me out of nowhere, which really startled me. He greeted me abruptly, and being the typical Canadian, greeted him back and asked him how he was doing. He took a seat across from me on the table and said he was doing great, and also proceeded to tell me that he noticed me sitting outside for quite a while, which immediately set red flags off for me. Nevertheless, 
I stayed rooted to my spot. As he started asking me why I was out here, where I went to school, what program I was studying and in which city I lived, which I all answered, of course. It was stupid of me, but I didn't know what else to do, as I didn't want to be mean or rude. He then asked my age. I told him I was 17. Immediately, there was this uncertain look on his face, but he just kept on going with whatever the hell he was saying. I just smiled and nodded at him, but my smile dropped once he asked me if I wanted a ride in his car. I then told him my brother was coming to pick me up, and he asked how long he would be. I said he'd almost be here, so there'd be no need for him to give me a ride. But this dude kept asking me if I was sure, and that he could take me home. Bear in mind it was past 3am at this point, and if he really thought I was going to say yes to getting in his car, then he was delusional, which I think he may have been. He might have been a killer, or a rapist, or a paedophile for all I knew, because I looked a bit young for my age, and have a girly girl kind of vibe, so maybe he approached me thinking I was younger than 17, based on the fact he wasn't really bothered if I was a minor. Anyway, thanks to my constant nose, he finally got up, gave me goodnight with a weird smile, got into his black truck type car, and slowly drove off. I was a bit shaken by the whole thing, but luckily about 10 minutes later, my brother pulled up to where I was, and I never mentioned what happened before he arrived. I'm a casual cosplayer. I walk around in costume often, but more frequently in summer or autumn-like weather. As today is the last day of daylight savings time, it gets dark promptly before 5.30. Today I traveled downtown in my Edward Elric cosplay. I'm talking wig, gloves, jacket, everything. I only leave the house for two reasons aside from work and it's either for needing air or handling business. The time being a little after four, I figured an hour or two out wouldn't hurt. Being cooped up had left me restless, so I went to a Starbucks near me where I ordered and sat observing everyone. Every now and then someone will recognize the characters I'm dressed as and will either compliment me and leave or sit for a small talk and will become social media friends. Her name was Alice and I remember her features well. She was a petite girl with long black hair tied back into a messy bun and had gorgeous hazel eyes that complimented her freckles. Her skin tone was beautiful too. She approached me with enthusiasm and we talked about anime for 30 to 45 minutes. Needing to return home before my social battery evaporated, as I'm an introvert, Alice begins begging me to stay a bit longer once I inform her. She was seemingly such a sweet woman and genuinely great company, so convincing me took nothing at all. Minutes turned into hours, and next thing I know, the time reads 6 o'clock. Immediately I fly into panic because being on public transportation after dark and living in a not-so-safe area isn't an ideal situation to be in. I stressed this to her and she offers me a ride, to which I feel bad but accepted. Now, I know better than to hitch rides from strangers, and as a misanthrope, distrusting humans comes naturally for me. But me also being stupid by giving people the benefit of the doubt, I willingly followed her back to her car, which was parked just around the corner. So we exit the Starbucks and I instantly get this weird feeling 
in my stomach. Cold weather occasionally gives me anxiety, so I dismiss the feeling as such. However, it worsened the further we went and the longer we walked. Her car wasn't parked around the corner. She didn't even have a car. I was lured into a more desolate, secluded part of the area, which was an immediate red flag. Without word, I silently paused in my tracks and watched as Alice continued walking until she stopped at the corner. She asked what was wrong and gestured to the black car across the way from us, urging me to hurry. I took out my phone and pulled up a random message from a conversation with my best friend and lied. Flashing the screen, I said, my best friend's in the area. He said he'd give me a ride. Her expression flickered. Glancing at the car, I could see the windows were tinted, but the back window was slightly down and the silhouette of a figure could vaguely be spotted. As calm and collected as I appeared to be, I was mentally freaking out. But thankfully, she didn't push. I apologized, turned on my heels, and headed back toward the Starbucks. Cautiously and reluctantly, I looked back at her as she eventually continued to the car. I'm not sure what would have happened had I continued disregarding my intuition, but I'm glad I didn't. It's the one year anniversary of this happening, so I thought I might share it. Last year I was traveling home from South Africa. My depression and anxiety was at one of its worst points, when I finally arrived in Heathrow from Durban. I was exhausted from the 11 hour flight I had been on since 1 a.m. Due to the way my connecting flight from Heathrow to Glasgow worked, I had to pick up my bags and redrop them off. So after that, I had about a five hour wait for my next flight. I went through security a little flustered as this was my first time traveling completely alone. I was with others on my flight out though. And after I got through security, I went to the airport showers. There was this older man standing outside the showers. I thought this was a little odd, because if you've been in Terminal 5, you know the showers are a little bit further away from the rest of the duty-free and restaurant area. I just assumed he was waiting for someone until he stared and smiled at me, entering into the women's section. Something about the smile made me move faster. He wasn't there when I came out the bathroom. Thinking no more of it, I went to get some food for quickness and went into the Starbucks, which was near enough slap bang in the center of the terminal. The queue was so long I decided to call my mum. We chatted for ages when I realized someone was standing way too close to me. If it weren't for my rack sack, I'm sure the person would have been right against my back. I probably don't need to tell you who it was, and without making it look obvious, I took a step back which pushed him away. Acting innocent, I turned and apologized. That's when he smiled at me. This time I smelt his breath, which was beyond foul, and he radiated B.O. In what I think was French, he said something to me which I think was, Ça va ma chérie? Which, if I'm right, translates to, It is fine, my dear. Bit weird, but as I previously mentioned, I'm not all that bright. The queue moved forward and I ordered and paid and waited for my sandwich and drink. When my name was called, I stepped forward and just went to take my things when he took them off me and said in English, A sweet dear like you shouldn't have to carry things. I quickly grabbed them and walked away and went and sat on the benches. He sat across from me and put his hand on my knee. I got up and moved. Next, an arm went round my shoulders. I got up again, but this time, finding one ounce of vague intelligence, I went to the British Airways help desk, who brought me the police, who tried to get me to spot him, but by this time he had vanished. 
They told me not to worry and to sit near the help desk, where I phoned my brother, who calmed me down. Later, the police escorted me onto the plane where I finally made it home, where a hug from my parents has never been so appreciated. Hey guys, it's Amon, and I have a channel here on YouTube called Fear Street where I tell scary stories with an emphasis on the paranormal. If you guys enjoyed these, I really think you'll enjoy my channel, and if you want to head over and show your support, I'd really appreciate it. And also, Mortis, thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And uh, maybe we can do it again sometime.